the Elmo voice can't be an easy thing to to do to, to just create that that sound and maintain it and maintain right. it. Yeah. Do you have to do what, what's your sort of vocal regimen either to do warm ups and cool downs or just to make sure that you're not damaging? I am awful at that. I, I none of us. I have to tell you, none of us do that, and um, we probably should. But I think for me. I'm lucky in the sense that I'm sort of a ten I sit in sort of a tenor range, right? I, I don't Kevin was a baritone, so it was harder for him to get up there. I have it's not as difficult for me because I already have a I already have a, a, a younger voice, right? Um so and it's funny because actually Paul Rudolph told me when I started doing Elmo that his range changed. That mm. he's he can now sing in a slightly higher range just because that's where my voice sits. Um, and so the, it's not, it's only tough to do in vocal records. Like I did, oh my God, I did, maybe this was my second or third year. They were testing out this new toy and, um, long and short of it was they needed me to record every, not every known name in the English language, oh, but pretty much something like that. It was, I think it was 40,000 names. It was either oh, 40 or 30. God. And uh, How it long was, did that take? well, it was, <laughs> I think it was six or eight sessions of three hours and we were booking, you know, it was yeah. cause you'd have to go, Emily, Emily, Emily. And you'd have to, you have to do that for each one. Always when you're in a voiceover, when you're in a booth, you have to give three options for everything you do. You know, it's, you have to give three options for everything you do. You have to give three options for everything you do. So you, you three options for everything you do. <laughs> and so for the toys, I had to do that as well. And it was oh, long man. days. Well, I only... don't know. This is our third recording of this podcast. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. So by the third one, you're right. You know, you gotta, yeah. but uh, no. So I, uh, I did that and that was such a learning curve. It was rough though, man. It was, uh, but it taught me about the stamina of keeping that voice going. I save laughs till the end of a record and I don't do them unless I have to, because it's easier on set because when you're on set all day, you're not talking all day or you're not talking as Elmo. Like I never talk as Elmo if I don't have to, oh, because yeah. it is a strain, right? Um, eventually, but I only, I do, I max out at three hours. My, vo my vocal sessions are three hours. After that, I will, I'll be on the phone with somebody and I'll be talking like the, my voice does crack after a certain a number of hours doing it. Um, but I'm able to do it the next day for the most part, unless we're, you know, there have been times where we're shooting things like Elmo's world or I mean, we're, we fly through those just because we have so much to do in a small amount of time. And I'll come in I, there. There has been one time where I came in and I, I woke up in the morning and I couldn't quite do it. And I was, I was really nervous, but I was able, I was, I was able to squeak it out, yeah. but it did, you know, what's interesting about a falsetto that I don't think a lot of people think about, especially with Elmo and actually like Mickey and Piggy and, all those voices, people, people just tend to do this when they do Mickey Mouse or Elmo or whoever. And what oh they don't, boy. right. But <laughs> what, what you're doing is, is the right instinct, right? Oh boy. There's, there's, you've got two, you have two uh, con, yeah. contract, uh, con, uh, uh, contrasting sounds, right? So it's almost like a chord or like a, like a subtone, like a clarinet. You have, um, uh, it's not just the falsetto also in that voice is that performer's lower register because that's just their natural speaking voice that's gonna come out. So I'm always very cognizant of that. And when I started, I almost had to build up the scar tissue for lack of a better word to get oh, yeah. that resonance. You know, when you when I started doing Elmo, it was a very thin sound. And it was also very hard for me to, for diction purposes, the higher, you, the higher your falsetto is, the harder it is to speak clearly um that was something i struggled with for a while um and still there are some words he can't say very well it's almost like uh there's i don't remember what they are until i do them but it's like <laughs> double l's are hard they come out like r's all or um hallway or i don't know i'm just trying to but so there are some things he has a hard time saying or you're like what did he just say so um all of those things could together it's definitely I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking about it i'm always thinking about was that clear uh, does it sound like him? Because sometimes it does get, the longer the day goes on, it does get gravelier and gravelier. Yeah. But um, the only people that really have to worry about that are myself and David. David does cookie and he, um, I think he maxes out at about three hours. That voice is rough, man. Oh, I don't know yeah. how he does that. 
I don't know how he does that and maintains it. That is, you're right. It's the hardest thing to do is maintain a voice like that. And you have to, you know, that's one of the biggest parts of the job. Can you keep that voice? You know, obviously we're talking about voice. This is technique. You, you guys know yeah. it's character, but as far as a technical standpoint goes, can yeah, you keep, yeah. can you keep that sound consistent for a six or eight or 12 hour day sometimes?